All right, so this uh, let's do this uh, review quickly. I'll have more with Vinny tonight, actually, when we have 90 minutes to review both shows. But uh, the opener was a fun match. Claudio and Brian Danielson beat Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara. When Claudio submitted, tap, 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 Chris Jericho in the middle of the ring, which builds up their four-way coming up at the pay-per-view. It was a very fun opener. Liked the match a lot. Good stuff. We had a Darby video where uh, Sting alerted us that he will be there at the pay-per-view, which led to the announcement of the Jeff Jarrett and uh, Jay Lethal versus Sting and Darby Allen match at Full Gear. I'll go over the full card here in a moment. We had Swerve Strickland beating Anthony Bowens with the JML driver in the middle of the ring. Thought the match was good. Uh, one of the big there were there were uh, there were highs and lows on this dynamite as we'll get to, but one of the things that I really appreciated that not a lot of people mentioned actually was if you've been watching this show of late, uh, dude, interference, 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 like match after match after match. Very little of that on this show. Opener, clean finish. This match, clean finish. As we'll get to as we get on, more clean finishes. So, simple challenger beating a champion to set up a tag match at the pay-per-view. We had a great Samoa Joe heel interview, and he is interrupted by Hobbs, who wants to beat him up. And then Wardlow comes out. They have a three-way brawl. The Geeks run out to uh, to get everybody out of there. Wardlow hits a giant flip dive over the top onto the pile, jumps in the ring. He's beaten up some security. He stands tall. They are doing a three-way at the pay-per-view. And we had this Britt Baker promo. I could talk about this more tonight, but total 100% babyface promo by Britt Baker. This was not a great crowd, but you could hear them. She cut this promo, and they were cheering her as the essential. She's essentially the hometown face of this company's women's division, facing one of the faces five years ago of the uh, competition's women's division, who basically came in and said, you ain't nothing if you've never been to WWE, which was a huge misstep. And now we've got essentially, you know, Britt Baker representing this company against the outsider. And it'll be very interesting for a lot of reasons what happens in this match on, on Sunday. Because, you know, Soraya, she noted that she really didn't get cleared until Halloween. It's the 17th. She's been cleared for 18 days. She hasn't been in the ring in five years. I guess maybe she's been doing some training. But, you know, what would, why would she be training in the ring if she was under the impression she was never going to wrestle again? So there's a lot of stuff. This is going to be, you know, she mentioned she'd be under a microscope. Will she ever for hey, this match this. Uh. on Saturday? Death Triangle beat Top Flight at AR Fox. How A.R. Fox ended up in a championship match after never appearing on Dynamite, I don't know, but I was glad he was there. Well, he's trained a lot of he was great. <laughs> and uh, he was offered a, he was offered a uh, uh, contract afterwards. Because you know they need talent. So anyway, I expect he'll be signed. Actually, yeah. well, go ahead. And then afterwards, uh, Pac cut a promo on unnamed individuals, but then the graphic appeared on the screen. They made the big announcement. The Elite is back. They are challenging for the trio's titles at the pay-per-view. And after the graphic appeared, Pac can now mention them by name again. The Elite has returned. And they are not Wayward Sons. They also have not wrestled in months. Although I would not be the least bit surprised if this is far and away the best match on the pay-per-view coming up on Saturday. Ethan Page and Bandito. This is not because of me, but I can't help but notice that that Bandito match on Rampage, they gave that bloke nothing, and then he stole a win. And I thought, my God, you spent all this money on this guy, and that's... Well, he lost here. Clean, by the way. But holy smokes, they made this guy look like a million bucks. He looked awesome in this match. He's got charisma, you know, coming out of his ears. He's doing moonsaults off the post. He's doing his power spots. He was awesome. But it was not to be. Ethan Page pinned him and is moving on to the uh, to the finals of this tournament. Soraya does a promo. 
you can see that everybody is now self-conscious about what happened last week on the show. Her promo is essentially, I don't want to talk anymore. Let's just wrestle on Saturday. And she walks out. So that was the end of that. Tony Storm beat Anna Jay. Not good. Thankfully, not long. She beat her. Jamie Hayter hits the ring. They have the stare down. And that is the segment. And then this main event segment with John Moxley and MJF. So it was not very good. And the crowd was absolutely, I mean, they weren't absolutely dead, but they they reacted to this like they did not care about this match at all. So Moxley comes out, and uh, Moxley is a absolutely fantastic promo. But he's one of those guys where, you know, he needs to fully understand the story, where they're going, and everything. And then he weaves all of that into his promos. If you recall when he was champion uh, before, he would do these these promos where he would essentially tell you exactly what was going to happen at the pay-per-view. And then it happened. He did this for like four straight pay-per-views or something like that. This guy looked like a guy who has no idea what's going on. He came out to cut this promo. And he's trying to explain the storyline with MJF, CM Punk, MJF disappearing, coming back as a babyface, being given a chip, but now he's a good... He is just... He can't do it. And he looked flustered, and he screwed up some lines. Although my favorite screw-up was just... He delivered it so great that it actually made it even better. But uh, when he couldn't figure out what day the pay-per-view was, he, just, he had no idea. And apparently Pac did a tweet, and he had no idea what day the pay-per-view was either. So anyway, oh my God, if he would have said, asked MJF what the date was and MJF said it, and then Moxley goes, well, yeah, of course, because I got to watch it live. That's what would have made the day. So uh, then then uh, Stokely comes out and, you know, the, uh, oh man, I need, I need a lot of time tonight to talk about this. But regardless, he comes out and he goes after, him and his guys go after MJF. So then, of course, I'm sorry, they go after uh, Moxley. So MJF, now I'm John Moxley. So they go after MJF, then, which tells you a lot about this storyline. Then, no, they go after Moxley. Damn it! So they go after John Moxley. MJF comes out to make the save. He doesn't get a great reaction coming out. He starts beating these dudes up. He gets in the ring, and I can't say it's crickets, but it's close. And so he's like, come on, everybody! He's trying to get them all fired up. Which, to his credit, they did start getting a little bit fired up at that point. And then he threatens uh, Stokely's crew. And then he cuts a promo on Moxley. And even though we've been led to believe that he's a babyface, he then cuts a promo where he already has dropped the line. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled is convincing the world he didn't exist. And he tells Moxley, the devil will be there on Saturday. So, like, when this was over, I was like, bro, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. And before, I didn't know what was going on. But the way that it had been up to this point, I was like, I kind of like that I don't know where they're going. Because there's, like, a lot of different ways that they could go. But this one, I was, like, so baffled at the end of it. And then you add in the crowd... And then you add in Stokely, which now makes the people distrust MJF even more. The whole thing was like, wow. And then Moxie drops the line about Sunday. Is it Saturday? What day is the (laughs) pay-per-view? And they have to explain to him what day the pay-per-view was. And then they have the face-off, and I just was like, wow. What a segment that was. Yeah. Lenny here says, you're all overthinking this, and as a result, you're spinning it. No, we're not overthinking this. The whole thing is overbooked right now. That's the problem. And I know it's overbooked because John Moxley can't make sense of it. And that's like his strong point is making sense of these storylines in his promos. And he could not make sense of this in his, in, his, uh, in his promo. So, no, it's not us that are overthinking all of this. The thing is overcomplicated right now. And we'll see what they end up doing at the pay-per-view. Are you all right over there? Did we lose Mike? Oh, there you are. Yep, Comcast. Comcast is in the area. 
thankfully for them. Damn this Comcast. But, uh, yeah, well. Of course I read the chat. Hey, look, I read the chat the whole time. Go ahead. Uh, I know we're almost out of time here, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, look, we have two full uh, minutes. I can echo what you said on the, the overbooking of the whole deal with the main event. This is how I would save Britt Baker and Soraya, because that was just ridiculous. And frankly, Britt Baker should be a baby face anyway. Jamie Hayter and Soraya as a team. I don't know if you want to keep Rebel with Britt Baker so you can have her and Soraya play off each other, but I think that that's probably the best way to go. Tony Storm beats Jamie Hayter. Cool. Okay, fine. Maybe uh, something happens where Britt does something and it backfires or something like that, but that promo was ridiculous, frankly. Again, under the circumstances, unless Soraya is going heel, there was no reason to let Britt get a receipt. I don't think Soraya went out there with the intention on burying Britt. And then to do this, if Britt's going to be a baby face, it just doesn't really make any sense. Maybe they should get like a different producer to give the show a different kind of feel. Actually, actually yes. Maybe okay. they should put the cameras upside down. How about that? You know what they need is black and white. Or put him black and white, Jared. Make him <laughs> so- look as old and gray as possible. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, Jared, can you put Vinny upside down? There we go. <laughs> this is what's going to make this show better. We're going to review Rampage with Vinny on a different camera angle. Put it in an angle, though, Jared. Like, uh, yeah, add black and white. Now yeah. we're talking. Vinny, can you spike your hair up next week? <laughs> yeah, just put your hair up in a spike. <laughs> we'll, we'll have you doing the show upside down, hanging from the ceiling like a bat. The Vin right. Man. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.